Good morning, I'm Rainier Santiago and I will be presenting to you the day one activity about introduction to material science and engineering. This is our front page and my group mates. And next is the introduction. Here we can see the historical perspective where we start in Stone Age where our ancestors mainly used a stone for their everyday life. And the next is the Bronze Age where they discovered metals like bronze metals and eh, material were can be much stronger than stone and the last the end iron age this ancestor of us greatly make use of our resources to develop and to advance their life the way of living and many materials has been discovered until now so that it can be, be beneficial to us so next is, this is many age of discovery. After this many age of discovery, there are people also that eventually learn how to make better use of that materials by improving its qualities. They learn how this material reacts with many other different materials. And they learn its different structure. So as said, Scientists recently understood the link between material structure and its properties. So, here you can see, after so, ma so many years, we have now have these different, so many kinds of materials that we, we are using today and greatly helps us shape our lives today. And... So here, you can see the different structure of materials. You can see the subatomic structure that involves an electron. And next is atomic structure. Next is the nanostructure. Next is the micro, micro structure. Next is the macro structure. So this macro structures structural elements that may be viewed by our naked eye what it means is we can see with our eyes like without using any micro microscopes and any other device to see these structures so next is there are six different categories and the first one is mechanical properties here you can see the metals and its properties and application when we say the mechanical properties the next is the thermal properties where relates how temperature changes in a certain material next is the electrical properties the move the movement of electron and holes when we say holes, this is the charge in insulating materials because they exchanging of electrons in conducting materials. The next is the the next is magnetic properties. So when we say magnetic, so this is about magnetization of certain material. So the last is optical properties which relates to the how certain materials passes light through it like different kinds of glass or we can say silicons and many other materials so next is here so why we need to study material science and engineering it says that it it is a combination of material science, engineering, physics, and chemistry in which to solve real-world problems. And it scopes many things. The example is the, the nanotechnology. So, the next is, yeah, that's the same. And the next is groups of materials. So the first is ceramics. 
you can see the different kind of ceramics here. Right? The organic materials, or metallic materials. When we say the ceramics is combination of these two, two or more materials. It can be combination of metals and other materials like like ano, cement plus this is ceramics refractories pottery this is different kind of ceramics so composites which is made of two or more different materials like and next is metals so the metals is which we know that are mostly prepared materials because of its toughness and being conducting material in electrical properties so the next is the nanomaterials these materials measured about 100 nanometers and they usually used in tubes rods and fibers like our clothings what what we use every day and next is the textile textile are materials that made from fibers then thin thread of filament that are natural or synthetic or a combination of both and here in the picture the example so the next is polymers the last one polymers are uh, is a large molecules or macro molecules macro means we can see with our naked eye so composed of millions of repeated things units so each a relatively light and simple molecules so this is the different example the wool cellulose and nylon polyester epoxy you know. so next is this um, this part of this presentation is what this is the uh, no, the here we can see the different things that we we make from our materials like metals like as said many scientists and engineer exposed to design problems involving materials for example it is transmission gear so it is made up of metals so they develop develop this for our vehicles to move and the next is the superstructure superstructure for a building so the superstructure is the component constructed so constructed about the ground level while the sub substructure is the component built below the ground level so this is also made up of mostly metals and some cements so oil refinery components an oil refinery is a, is a facility that takes crude oil and distill it into various useful pet petroleum products such as gasoline, kerosene, or jet blue fuels. Refining is classified as a downstream operation of oil and gas industry. Although many integrated oil companies will operate both extraction and refining services. So this, we can now discuss about the advanced materials so advanced materials the materials used in high-tech application can occasionally called advanced materials high technology comprises electronic devices such as cell phones dvd players and other electronic device computers fiber optic system high energy density batteries so that's the different kinds of advanced materials so high technology also refers to products that use comp comparatively sophisticated and complex principle to operate or function these advanced materials frequently combine both with newly developed 
high performance materials and traditional materials with enhanced properties. So, one of the examples is this semiconductors, advanced materials. This is the advanced materials. So, our, materi our materials which have a conductivity between conductors and non conductors or insulators. And semiconductors can be pure elements such as silicon or germanium, compounds such as gallium arsenide. We can also call this gas sometimes or cadmium selenide. So this is the picture, different pictures, transistor. Transi transistor is composed of semiconducting materials and inside of that so biomaterials by ano, materials that have been designed to interfere interface with biological system for the treatment augmentation or replacement of biological function biomaterials this is also on advanced materials contact lenses dental implants joint replacements this is what they use if, if there's a bone fracture they re replace by this advanced materials so next is the smart materials so materials that are manipulated to response in controllable and reversible way modifying some of their properties as a result of external stimulus such as certain mechanical stress or certain temperature among others because of their responsiveness smart materials are also known as responsive materials these are usually trans translated as active materials although it would be more accurate to say reactive materials this is the picture shape memory alloy piezoelectric ceramics, and magnetorheological fluids. Next is the nanomaterials. And materials with at least one external dimension that measure 100 nanometers or less, or with the internal structure measuring 100 nanometers or less. They may be in form of particles, tubes, rods, or fibers. These nanomaterials that have the same composition as no materials in bulk form may have different, different psychochemical properties than the same materials in bulk form and may, and may behave differently if they enter the body. They may thus pose different potential hazard. So, this is the silver, iron oxide, and synthetic amorphous silica. So that's all for this presentation and thank you.